I spent one month learning about sleep to improve these three essential components. On average, we spend one third of our lives sleeping, but with busy schedules and the wrong habits, it can be hard to get the most out of that time. Over the past 30 days, I've collected new tips and habits that have helped me, and I hope that will help you get the same results. The first component we will discuss is schedule. Before we continue, I want to clarify that I'm not a professional and all the information shared is based on things that I've read and learned about. This is not a prescribed solution and if you have serious sleep issues, please consult a professional. Improving my schedule was by far the most important ingredient. To do this, I first wanted to know more about the circadian rhythm. This internal 24 hour clock tracks time through light and responds accordingly to make us feel alert or sleepy. When you maintain consistency, it is able to work optimally, allowing you to fall asleep and wake much easier. I've created a few non-negotiables that have helped me avoid breaking my schedule. Feel free to implement any that you'd like. Number one, avoid staying up too late and sleeping in on weekends. From our perspective, it's the end of the week and we should be able to relax and stay up late. But to our circadian rhythm, it's just another day on that 24 hour cycle. Don't worry, you don't have to maintain a perfect schedule though. According to John Hopkins, sleep expert, the human clock can shift about an hour or two per day. As long as you stay in a two hour time frame, you will have a much easier time maintaining the schedule. Number two, limit long naps during the day. Naps are beneficial and can improve focus and alertness, but anything too long can make it hard to fall asleep when you need to. According to the Sleep Foundation, the best nap length for adults is around 20 minutes and no longer than 30 minutes. Number 3. Don't press snooze in the morning. I know how good it feels to get that extra time in bed, but I found that if I get used to hitting snooze, I'm more likely to sleep in longer and longer each day. Over the past 30 days, I also realized how responsibilities like education and work really inhibit my ability to keep a consistent schedule. While I plan to go to bed at a certain time, it's been easy to get occupied doing other things. To help me maintain my sleep schedule and fall asleep easier, I added a wind down time to my evening. This acts as a transition from what I am doing to getting ready to sleep. To help me remember to wind down, I set a wind down alarm that goes off around an hour before I plan to go to bed. During the wind down period, I try to avoid blue light and too much physical activity. This hour gives me the opportunity to read, journal, or stretch. Feel free to choose any relaxing and easy activity to help you transition into sleep. The next ingredient to our optimized circadian rhythm is light exposure. When it comes to exposing yourself to light during the day, there are two key times to do it. The first time is right after waking up. Try your best to expose yourself to direct sunlight. If that's not possible, then use an artificial light. The second period is the afternoon. Take some time to soak in some of that afternoon sunlight. According to the Sanford Lifestyle Medicine Program, in the afternoon, sunlight helps to make the clock stronger. At any time of the day, Getting sunlight means that artificial light has less of an impact on your circadian rhythm in the evening. As someone who gets up before sunrise, having direct sun exposure in the morning is challenging. If this is something you experience too, then here are a few things I use to wake up easier. Get as much light from artificial sources as possible. While your ceiling light doesn't even compare to the sun on a clear morning, it does help your brain wake up. Increase your internal heat. You can do some form of high intensity exercise or my favorite, cold showers to get your internal heat up. Drink water and have a light snack. I found that eating something light, especially if I was waking up early to work or exercise was beneficial. Once you have an opportunity to get direct sunlight, then I would highly recommend doing so. The third and final ingredient was one that I never thought had a relationship to my sleep. This ingredient is liquid and food consumption. This component helped me reduce one of my biggest sleep disruptors, which is waking up to use the bathroom. 
I did this by limiting liquid consumption after 1-2 to two hours before bed. Don't feel like you need to completely stop drinking water though. If you feel thirsty, have a few sips. When it comes to those middle of the night wake ups, I also try to avoid drinking too much. But if you feel parched, then feel free to have some water. When it comes to consuming food, I found that the same rules apply. Cutting off food 2-4 to four hours before bed can help you fully digest it. Again, if you need to eat something, go for it. From experience, eating lighter foods from within the 1-2 to two hour time period from going to bed doesn't really have that much of an impact and can also get rid of any last minute hungers. While doing my food research, I also became curious if there was some magical food you could eat to help you fall asleep. While none of the foods I found will make you fall asleep instantly, they can help you with their content of melatonin. Here are a few foods I found that experts say contain melatonin and can help aid sleep. Number 1. According to the study on dietary sources of melatonin, walnuts, almonds, and other nuts, while not only rich in protein and other great nutrients, also contain melatonin. Tomatoes and peppers are two vegetables that have shown to have the highest concentration of melatonin, which may help with sleep. According to the Sleep Foundation, tart cherry juice contains an above average amount of melatonin and antioxidants that may aid in sleep. Milk has also shown to have potential sleep aiding benefits as it also contains melatonin. 